hello hello welcome back to my channel um my name is fatima i forgot to say that in my last video and in this video i will be showing you how i've made this beautiful if i say so myself hardcover with a window for a journal that i will be making in the next few videos i will be showing how i've done this so if you like to see the process then continue watching okay so the first thing that you are going to need for this is patience because there is a lot of drying time involved and once you've gathered that then you can go ahead and find yourself a book base in my case i'm using a piece of cardboard i am using also some chipboard well this is not chipboard but any chipboard or thin thin cardstock would work and a Tyvek envelope and I will show you why I'm using a Tyvek envelope in a little bit um, the first thing I'm going to do is cut my board to size and this is the back of a paper pack that I'm using here it's just a little bit um, heavier than cardstock but thinner than actual cardboard and what I'm doing here is just marking where I'm going to center my picture. I mark two inches of the top and, and bottom and one and a half inches from each side. And now I'm using the picture that I'm going to eventually put in the middle to just mark a square so that I know exactly what I'm going to cut out of this. and now that i've done this i'm gonna go ahead and use my paper trimmer for this because um you could use if you don't have a paper trimmer you could use a exacto knife and a ruler but i am not very confident in my use of a exacto knife to be able to do this it probably would have worked out better but you know it is what it is so i've cut my window and now i'm going to measure make sure that everything fits it still needs a little bit of work at this point but i am happy with where i am at this moment so i'm just gonna move on and trim my window piece i'm gonna trim the edges because i want it to be center kind of on my cover I, I wanted to have dimension and have that little bit of space between my cover and my my book and my window so what i ended up doing so that i can make sure that my pa my picture fits in the window correctly um, i just used the square that i cut off and i measured that and now the picture fits in there more or less um, and now I'm just m measuring and cutting the back part of that because I also want to put sort of like a panel in the back of my journal so again like I have that dimension there okay and now I am just measuring the back panel and the front panel they ended up measuring seven and a quarter inch by nine and three quarters of an inch right about and here's the reason why I wanted to use a Tyvek envelope because since I'm using a cardboard piece for the back of my cover I wanted to make sure that those ridges on the sides were covered and that um, you know there was a little bit of, of reinforcement um, even though this type of cover wouldn't need that much of that because it's one solid piece bended in the middle But still it's nice to have and make sure that your cover is just not going to fall apart at some point After all we are going to be gluing more pieces and added adding um, You know other things or other wet mediums so I just glue the cover the envelope to the to my base and now I'm gluing the corners in to make sure that there is no little hole that, um, you know, the corners are going to seep through or anything like that. I just glue the corners in and then I'm just gluing the sides, folding the sides in um, 
to make sure that everything is nice and tucked, just pull down the sides and make sure that everything is nice and tight. And for this, uh, for the sides, I ended up using this um, fabric tag glue because it's just, it sticks faster, it grabs onto things faster and it kind of dries faster. So I decided to change from white glue to this. Um, and that is my fourth and last side of glued in. And basically now I just have a full base for my cover. And the part with the writing is going to be my front. And the blank, the white part is going to be the back of it. And I'm just taking a look to see if everything um, falls in the place where I want it to fall. Now this, I made a mistake here. Don't do this. <laughs> I um, did not add it glue evenly and this is going to cause me problems later. Um, I just put some glue. I don't know what I was thinking at this point because I know that this is just going to cause buckling later. Uh, when you are gluing your panels to your cover, Please make sure that you do a nice even layer of glue and not this atrocity that I am doing right now. <laughs> Just like I did when I was gluing the cover, the envelope to the cardboard. This is the same way that you were supposed to glue the panels, not like I did just here. But moving on from that, <laughs> I decided to take two pieces of fabric so that I can make a little bit of uh, add a little bit of dimension on my oh my god on my spine. <laughs> oh. And I like this fabric because it's not very thick, but it has a lot of texture. And then I'm just going to start adding some pieces of paper. I'm just basically starting to create texture um, on this. Uh, something that I wanted to say earlier but I just didn't have the chance. This journal is heavily inspired by Johanna's, uh, Johanna Cloud, I think Clouds. I, I do not know how to pronounce her name. I am so sorry. Um, I love her videos. I watch her videos and I love her journals. They are so beautiful and unfortunately i've never been able to get my hands on one of them so this is why i am just making my own right here but yeah so um what i'm doing here is very basic i'm just tripping pieces of paper and gluing it up and i'm going to let that dry for a good few hours and then i wanted to add more texture and I'm using this per lesson texture paste because the regular texture paste that I had is so old that it just dried up. So I'm just adding some texture paste over here, trying to make sort of like a frame, but you can add it wherever you want. This is artistic liberty over here. <laughs> um, so I am just adding it and kind of patting it down so it makes kind of it gives it this this little textured ridgy type of thing that is going to um, kind of highlight the frame and that's that's what I was going to that's what I wanted because I'm not putting, you know, anything else, any other type of embellishments around the frame. So then I started spreading the, uh, the texture paste around. Unfortunately, if you want to do this, you need to make sure that the texture paste is thick enough. Unfortunately, I smeared it too thin and at the end, you're not going to be able to see it through the paint and everything. But... Um, you know, I still enjoy smearing, smearing texture paste around. It's, it's, it was fun. <laughs> so, um, I'm just going to let that dry. 
again I told you there was a lot of drawing time involved and this is how it looks this is what I told you about the corners you see that kind of smooshy uh, type of texture on the corners and now I'm just going to cover everything on a uh, with gesso so that everything is even colored wise and when I go to put in my color it's not you know it doesn't give me a hard time now I wanted to show you this because since I was gluing those papers my gesso started crackling as it dried and I just wanted to show this part because if you wanted to do a crackle medium and you didn't have crackle medium but you wanted to have that effect you can just add some glue at the bottom you know add some glue and then add your paint and it will crackle anyways I just gave it a second coat of um, of gesso just to make sure that things were going to be looking even and I also gesso the inside is really not necessary but I just felt like I needed to um, then I'm going to use these um, folk art paints and I'm just going to start with this kind of um, what what would that be it's like a coral type of color and that will be my base color before I leave it I gave it a second coat I gave it two coats of that and I let it dry and now I'm going to use the crackle medium also from folk art all of the um, materials that I'm using here I will link them not link them but list them if I can link them I'll link them but I will list them down below just in case you got confused about what I'm using or anything like that but yeah I just give it a, th a thin coat of not a thin coat I coated the cover on crackle medium and I let it dry uh, for an hour as the instructions said and I started adding my top layer of paint and I wanted to make sure that I didn't have to swipe different times you know swipe my brush a lot so I was using very thick coats of paint and this thing this is my first time working with crackle paint this thing work immediately you can see it right there the the paint started crackling right away. I don't know if it was because I put too much or what was that, but it was amazing. I didn't have a chance to swipe more than once. You know, you don't want to mess it up. So you can see, oh, there, my my son kind of touched it there. And I am just retouching it. And instead of swiping it, I'm just tap, tap, tapping on the paint so that it doesn't get smeared that it doesn't look smeared and that's the end result of it after I put my top paint I um it I don't know I really like how it looked the, it just looked like it's I just took a piece of wood and <laughs> and and covered it um, so yeah so now after it dried uh, for a couple of hours, I think I left the, the overnight. Um, I just wanted to add my picture, and I was thinking that it was looking kind of plain, so I also wanted to have to hand draw a little bit of you know art. <laughs> Oh, I, I just wanted to draw something on it because I didn't want to really add and bulk up the cover. So I added my picture in so that it can dry it up while I painted these little flowers on the cover. And this is kind of, <laughs> this this made me very nervous because this is kind of doing your eyeliner after you have a full face of makeup, okay? If you mess it up, it's going to be hard to, you know, fix. So, <laughs> um... <clears throat> So I just wanted to go for, uh, you know, those old vintage furniture type thing that, you know, you can find uh, and they had this hand painted art 
on it. I wanted to go for something like that. Um, but I kind of messed up a little bit on that one and I will fix it later. Unfortunately, I did lose some of the footage of me painting this because my memory got full and I didn't realize that I wasn't recording anymore and I just lost it. But you can see the beginning of it and um, I basically just repeat the same thing over and over again. I am just taking a, a thin brush and just kind of pressing the brush in to draw the petals and I do the same thing with these little vines that I'm drawing. Just pressing the brush in to draw the leaves and picking it up. Pressing and picking it up very quickly. Not, you know, staying there for too long because I don't want them to be sick. So, <clears throat> excuse that blurred in the middle. I had my head in the way. Um... So yeah, I just, I did the same thing and then I just added some leaves over that red petal that I mistakenly drew. And here we go. I just added a few more little accents with yellow and then I just added a couple of vines on the spine so that it will have a little bit of design when the book is closed and on the shelf and you can see it and I thought that was nice. So after this it was still looking a little bit too clean so I went ahead and took this Gilder's Paste Wax in gold and um, this one was kind of dry so it was kind of a little bit hard for me to work with it but I just rubbed it all over the corners and all of the raised parts of my book and I really liked how they turned out um, I also rubbed it in the inside edges just because I wanted to look you know like continuous so I'm moving on to do covering the inside of the of the cover and I'm using fabric I was going to use paper, but I like the feel of the fabric better. So I'm just using this beautiful flower pattern. Um, and then I'm using some of these. This is the same fabric that I used for the spine. Um, texture that I added and I'm going to use these two pieces here for pockets in the front and the back and I'm just going to cut them there to size so that I can sew around them and make a pocket which I already did isn't it magical <laughs> um, I'm not a very good at sewing I'm not very good at sewing but I did what I could you know and then I just glue that there and I am um, loving how it's looking and how it's feeling. I am a very tactile person so I really focus a lot on how things feel. So I'm going to go ahead and add a varnish on top to protect all of this hard work that I've done and all of this time that I've spent on this. And this is just a Liquitex varnish and this varnish mattes pretty good uh, the book so it doesn't have that much shine anymore which I like and to finish off the book I am just going to add these book corners um, to protect the corners because it was kind of soft I mean after all I am making it out of cardboard so I wanted to protect the corners and I'm adding these book corners which I'm just adding some glue inside of it and then just pressing them in with um, this tool that I cannot remember what it's called <laughs> oh my gosh there you go just add the glue and put it in and press it with that with that tool to make sure that it's nice and tight 
and then everything is done and this is how it's looking the pockets are very nice I can put things in there and I think that is that is it did I um, do something else I can't remember um, I think I'm just showing how the, the book looks yeah so <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you enjoyed it. Excuse my very rusty um, editing skills and voiceovering skills. This is sort of my first video back, but I hope that you liked it and that you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!